welcome to The Photography Guy. I'm your host, The Photography Guy. Let's get started here with another great photo show. Hey, welcome back once again to The Photography Guy. This is episode number 49 for Sunday, March the 23rd, 2014. I'm your host, Jack, and I'm going to take you on this magical ride between you, your camera, and your editors. I want to thank you for joining me here to learn more about making great photographs with your cameras. Please check out my website, thephotographyguy.net, where you can sign up for your free 7 Tips to Better Photography. Many of you had over over a 1,000 people have signed up for that uh, free white paper. And Man, I tell you, I couldn't be more humbled to how many people want to learn more about their cameras. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please check out this YouTube video. You'll find it at 42 Technoman. Number 4, number 2 Technoman. Or you can go to jackstechcorner.com and click on the YouTube link on the right. You'll find that. If you're new to photography, Photoshop elements, or if you're an old hand and an old pro, you might want to check out the new site that I'm working on and building, and that's what brings all these videos back to you and these audio podcasts. That is www.jtclearning.com. jtclearning.com. And that's where you can find great video tutorials. I'm working on tons of them, and that's why we're doing the live previews. Uh, for the past couple days now, we've had on and off, we've been doing these live previews. Today, folks, we're going to be working and talking about textures. Textures and patterns, because I had to throw patterns in there, because when I was playing with this tutorial and putting things together, I thought, well, uh, you know, the... The, the texture thing is pretty cool, but some of the things I was shooting actually turn out to be patterns. And when that happens, you have to reevaluate things and come up with a better concept to the whole uh, the whole scheme of the uh, the lesson here. Just trying to find my Lightroom. We are going to be doing some live shooting here this morning, and we are doing live shooting tethered. Tethered. That means, let me pick up this camera without dropping it or pulling the cable out. Tethered means there's a cable, a USB mini cable, plugged into the side of your camera. This runs to the computer, and as I take pictures, they come up directly on the computer. And we have a video of this somewhere back on YouTube. If you search through the YouTube videos, you will find Tethered Capture, and that exactly is what this is. The reason I wanted to do this, I wanted to give you some ideas of capturing uh, actual textures and patterns, and I wanted to talk to you about that. So if you're on the audio podcast, and I'm going to do my very best to describe everything we're doing uh, for the radio ho or the radio people out there, and we're going to also be showing you live, so you'll be able to watch us on YouTube and be able to capture all this uh, this this great uh, shooting here. So let's go ahead, and we're going to get started with that right away, so we don't waste anybody's time this morning. And we're going to switch over a couple cameras here. Um, let me see. How we can do this, we are going to go uh, to the desktop shot here, but I have to change the webcam to the other camera, should be this one, there we go, we should be able to put that in there, and pull it up a little bit maybe, we're going to move this up just a little bit, right about there, so you can see what's going on, I am going to show off the lower third, and then we're going to recapture the desktop here. So bear with me here. We're going to recapture this here and make this a little bit cleaner for you. So you can see what's going on. I don't think you need to see that part. We're just going to look at the pictures themselves. So we'll just pull this up here and over here. And now we'll be able to see the pictures. Let's see here. Done selecting. Back to the webcam. Pull this over a little bit there so we can see what's going on. Good. And we're going to cut to that one. All right. So now, hopefully, everything's going to be okay. Um, I don't actually... Oh, there it is. Okay. So here's my little tether box at the top. If you've never done this, I do suggest you do this. If you can see this up here, it gives you all the settings. I'm shooting at right now uh, aperture priority mode. 
Uh, the white balance is auto. The ISO is 1600 is what I'm shooting at. And the f-stop is 2.8, if you can see that right there. And I'm looking at the very top of the screen here. And the shutter speed is 1 over 250th. And we're going to hopefully be capturing right into our Lightroom. So that's why I wanted to bring you over to this other camera. I'm going to try to pull my microphone around here so we can uh, get some audio when we're doing this. Because I wasn't really thinking much about um, about actually being able to uh, shoot and um, uh, and talk at the same time. And so anyway, the camera's on. I'm using my 50 millimeter lens. If you can see that lens there, it's a 50 millimeter lens. And it's just a straight lens. Right now we are going to be on autofocus and we're going to be taking a picture of this wall back here. The wall I used a textured paint on it. Uh, when we did this, well, a textured paint, and we also spackled the wall. Uh, and if you don't think that's a chore, try that sometimes. That's a real job there for you. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and take a shot of this first, and I'm going to show you how this will actually come up on the screen. So we grabbed the shot of the textured wall, and you can see it now right on the actual Lightroom. So you can see how fast that comes in. It's really nice to be able to shoot like that uh, tethered. So if your camera will do that, just, you know, uh, most Nikons, Canon, Sony's will, and, you know, everything else. So you should be good to go and be able to tether capture with your camera. Okay, so the first shot we have is a picture of my textured wall. Now, I was thinking this morning, well, that's going to be pretty boring, Jack, to show a picture of the textured wall. Um, but I'm going to show you now what you should not do when you take a picture. Because I was out a lot of different times uh, shooting. And when I was out shooting, uh, I made a couple of mistakes. I'm going to show you one of them right now. You flip the flash up on your camera and take a shot. Watch this. Now watch what happens to the shot. Uh, you see how bright now it is, kind of blown out almost, uh, really, really, uh, just really light. I mean, you want to have more natural shots. So what I mean by natural shots is I would rather you uh, shoot the picture on a high ISO, but do it with a um, no flash. That's the best way to do this. All right, the next thing we're going to take a picture of here, we are going to take a picture of this little basket I have over sitting on this, um, on my turntable here. I'm going to try to get this mic straightened out a little bit better here. There we go. Got the mic out there a little bit better so I can uh, maybe see some of you. You can see me here on the side. I didn't think of this camera angle either when I was setting this up. It was more or less to allow you to see uh, the on the video here what we are taking pictures of. So the next thing we're taking a picture of is this basket. Now what I do is when I go shopping around, I go to local flea markets or garage sales and I look for interesting patterns or baskets my wife gets crazy with it because we don't do anything with them once i take pictures of them they stack up in the basement uh, they're very nice wicker baskets though and i happen to find these at a uh, some kind of auction or something a small auction so i picked them up so let's go ahead here we're gonna set that up there and we're gonna take a picture of that to get that pattern now we don't want a picture like this here we don't want this picture Now, if you look at this coming up on your screen, you're going to see it's a really nice picture of a basket, right? There's a really nice picture of a basket. <laughs> now, you can use that. Don't get me wrong. You can use that basket. You would just crop down what you don't want. Just crop out what you, you know, the piece that you really need. But the truth is, we just want to shoot the pattern here. We don't want to shoot the whole basket. So we're going to just shoot into the pattern itself. You can even shoot the bottom of this basket. But let's get a little closer and see what we get. So right now, my camera's having a hard time focusing. So what you'd want to do then, if you're getting that close, you don't have a macro lens, flip your camera on manual, manual focus, and try to get a focus yourself. And it looks like that's probably as close as I can get to that basket, right about there. 
Let's go back to autofocus, and we're going to see if we can get closer to the basket. And for the radio audience, we got pretty close, but we still can see the, bot the top of the turntable. And we can still see the top of the basket itself. So we want to try to get a little closer. But let's see what the autofocus will do now. And again, that's probably as close as we can get to that actual basket, right about there. But that's okay. When we go to use it, I'm going to show you how we're going to crop that out there, and we'll talk the radio audience through that. The next, the next item I thought we would take one pic more picture here, and I thought we would take a picture of a towel. Now, you don't have to buy a towel. Obviously, you have bath towels in your house and hand towels. This is just a hand towel I found. Uh, you know, don't tell the missus there. It was in the cupboard. And we're going to take a picture of this hand towel. Again, I'm just going to hang it over my basket. And we're going to use this as another type of a texture or pattern. So you can see what's happening here, folks. You can see that you don't have to uh, go out and buy anything. You probably have things around your house. I took a picture of my wall. I took a picture of this towel. And we're going to use these textures as... Uh, to enhance our backgrounds or enhance our letters or photos. There's so much you can do with textures and patterns. It's unbelievable. Let's go ahead and take a shot of this uh, this towel. And here we go. We're going to bring this towel up on the screen here. And you can see that's just another pattern we have there. I would suggest if you have any folds in the towel, uh, you can see some folds, some creases. We'll probably cut that out in post-production. We'll take one more here just to have an extra one. And we'll grab one more there for the road. There we go. So now we have all of our patterns that we want to have in here. We have everything ready to go. What we're going to do now here is turn this basket away. I'll, I'll refold the towel. I will. I'll put it back. Uh, I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm done with the camera. I'm going to uh, put my lens cover back on because I'm usually very bad with the lens covers. We'll put the camera over there on the side of things. Uh, we'll move the microphone back around here a little bit, and then I think we will just change the camera back around. And let me change the webcam back here. And there we go. Now we are back onto the computer screen once again, and we will start working our edit now. That's what we're going to work with now. We're going to work our edits. So this is the one we took here and I said we probably will have to crop some of this stuff down. So what we're going to do here is very simply go into, I'm still in Lightroom. I'm going to shut my tether mode off. We can turn that off. We're going into develop mode right now. And there we are. So we're in develop mode. Let's turn the tethered capture off and all we're going to do here is just make a couple little crops real quick before I even pull these into my Photoshop elements we're just going to crop this out and we'll just click on the crop button here you can see now it's a nice straight texture that's what we want nice straight we don't want those wrinkles in there here's the other one we were working on again we're going to just crop and you can use any program you want to crop out your stuff once you capture it if you're not capturing tethered if you are capturing in to your computer and you're putting these in Photoshop elements or whatever, you can definitely, uh, you know, crop these out in there. It's very simple. The next we're going to crop out our basket. This is the basket that we used earlier. We're going to do, I don't want the whole basket. I just want some of the texture here. That's what I want. So I'm just going to pull this down, crop that out. Kind of what we want. You can see through that, but that should be okay uh, for how we're going to be using them because you can see I had the towel laying in there and you know 
This one is a little blurry. I was just uh, taking a quick shot here, so we might just take out the center. We can use that for something somewhere down the road. And the whole basket here, I'm going to delete this shot. Uh, so we'll just remove the photo. We're not going to keep that. We have this one that was well lit. You can see it's very well lit. Uh, the texture's fine. I don't have to do anything with that one. And I don't have to do with anything with that one. What we're going to do now is we are going to open a couple of these textures in actual uh, Photoshop Elements is our next move. Now to do that, it's pretty simple. We'll go back to Library in Lightroom. We'll hit G where we can see our textures. And now we can actually make these thumbnails a little smaller. You can see the textures we have in here. I collect textures. A lot of you out there know that you've been watching these shows and, and talking to me for a long time and, and uh, following along with my YouTube videos. I like to collect textures when I'm out. Uh, if I'm out shooting anything and I see something interesting, I'll shoot a texture. Um, we were doing a wedding once. We shot, a, we shot a picture of the bedspread because it was really cool and it was just something to kind of hang on to. So... Again, nobody knows the best spread when I was done because I cut the texture out. We're going to take these textures up here. We're going to take a, a, a picture of the towel, one of the darker wall, and then I'm just going to grab this one of the basket. And we're going to right-click on that. And we're going to edit in, and we're going to edit this in Photoshop Elements Editor. And hopefully I put this in the proper editor. Uh, we're going to make, yeah, copies are fine. And now it is actually exporting as PSD files. And we're going to transfer this into our Elements Editor. And I don't know if you noticed, uh, for the radio audience, you probably didn't notice, but for the video audience, you'll say, well, why did that open up Photoshop Elements 11? The reason is, let's quit Photoshop Elements for a second. We are going to go to Lightroom, go to Preferences. We wanted to open up Photoshop Elements uh, 12. So we're going to choose an Elements Editor. Applications, we're going to go to, uh, let's see here. We are going to go down to Photoshop Elements 12, Support Files, and we're going to do the editor because we want this to open up in Photoshop Elements 12 now, not 11. All right, let's grab these again. Uh, that one, this one, and this one. I'm going to right click. I'm going to open them up in the editor. You can see now it says Elements 12. I should have captured that before and said, oh, I don't want Elements 11. Um, we're going to edit the originals this time. That's fine. It already copied them once. Now we have it up here on the screen. We're going to recapture the desktop because everybody knows that watches my videos knows that I'm, uh, I'm terrible at sometimes recapturing the desktops and people can't see what's going on. There we go. Now what we need to do is we need to grab Lightroom one more time because we're going to need a picture that we're going to edit. And we're going to find a picture we're going to edit. Now, probably not a picture of me. I'd rather find a picture of the missus. You know what? Let's do this. Let's use this picture. This might work out better. We are going to grab a picture here um, of nothing else. Something practical that you can do. So we're going to grab a picture of um, the sky here. And we're going to edit this in Photoshop Elements 12. We just edit the original. And 
and that is not one of the best pictures to edit because it's not a high enough resolution picture. Let's go back here. Go to my collections. We'll find something to edit here. Hold on. I'm just uh, working my way through this. Oh, none of those will work. We're going to grab this top picture of uh, the missus and we're going to edit that picture. All right. Now we're good. Now we're back in here and we're editing. No, that's fine. Make a copy. All right. Okay, and what we're going to do now here to edit this actual picture is we want to use this picture with our textures. Here's our different textures that we have going on. So to do this, first of all, we have to either select the subject in the front and inverse it, or we have to select the background. You can do this either way you want. We're going to do this just really quickly. We're going to go through and we're going to make a selection. <clears throat> and we're going to make a selection of the foreground here. We're going to change it from mask to selection. And we'll just make a selection here. Uh, let's go up to deselect. Okay, so we're making a selection. And again, this is not going to be a super good selection. The reason I'm doing this is to show or walk you through putting a pattern on the background. So the first thing you have to do is you have to use a selection tool, either the brush tool. I kind of like the brush. I've been using it more and more lately. Or you can use the quick selection tool or whatever you want to use. And you would select all of your subject first. That's your foreground. Anything you want to keep that's not going to be textured. That would be the foreground image. What we're going to do next is we will inverse this. And I'll show you that. We'll talk about that as we go through here. Definitely make your brush size bigger too. Don't ever strain. One thing I like teaching about Photoshop Elements and editing is don't strain, don't stress over your edits. If you need a bigger brush, use one. All right. Then we can go to Select and Inverse. That's going to allow us to have the background selected. Once we have the background selected, what you want to do on your keyboard is hit Command or Control J and you can see now we have the background. And if you can't see that, we do have layer one is now the background. We're going to rename layer one by right clicking on it and going to rename. And we'll call that background. The reason I rename my layers is because you start to get a lot of layers, you start to get lost. It would be like reading a book with no chapters. And so many times I see people working in Photoshop, they got layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. They don't know what's on them. If I change a hair color, I'll put hair on the layer. If I put on lipstick on a person, if I'm doing cosmetic work, I'll put lipstick because then I know where these layers are. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to two, go over to one of our textures. And let's go into, um, let me look at which one we want here. Let's go and take the wall texture. We're going to go up to select all. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy it. Go back to the actual uh, picture here, the portrait. And once we have the portrait going on here, we are going to simply, uh, I think I'm having some trouble here with my headphones. There we go. Then we are going to go up to edit and paste. And if everything works properly, you're going to see it's going to be pasted on a new layer at the top of the screen. Right up here at the top, there's a new layer. Now with that new layer selected, we're going to move it a little bit. And we're just going to move it up. And then we are going to pull it down a little bit because we want to make sure it covers your whole entire picture. Once you have that picture covered, we need to take this and we're going to group it with the background. So do a command or control G and that will group it right there. Once you get the grouping done, 
just trying to see why these uh, headphones are giving me a little bit of issue here. Once, oh, let's click the checkbox. I'll do a command or control G, and it's going to group it. What's going to happen now, you see your foreground person come back to the forefront because that texture now is kind of hid behind and it's grouped with the background. But it's not showing your background because we just want to put a texture on what you have. We don't want to cover up what you have. This would be replacing background. We don't want to do that. So we have to go to the overlays at the very top and set the blending mode here. And we're going to set the blending mode, come down to overlay. And now you can see that the actual blending mode itself is now blended in and we can see that we have that texture on that background. Here, I'll show it to you. This is without the texture, and that's with the texture. If the texture looks like it's too much, all you have to do is drop your opacity. The opacity is right above the layer, and if you drop that back, you can start dropping the opacity down, and you can bring the opacity back up very easily. Right there, okay. That looks pretty good. Let's say if we wanted to use one of these other textures. So let's go ahead and grab the basket because the basket texture is usually a pretty good one. You can see the effects on it. Again, we're going to select all, edit, we're going to copy it, and go back to our portrait. Click on your background layer, and then go edit, paste. Again, it's going to make a new layer. And if you notice this time, it already came behind the subject. The reason is, is because we already have those upper layers, the layers above the background layer, grouped. So that's why they're, they're such as that. Now let's go ahead and we're going to resize this uh, basket behind the person. And again, like I said, remember we cropped it because we can change the size of it. You can change wherever you want because all you want is the patterns. You want the, you know, the different patterns in there or the different textures. Once you do that, go back to your blending mode and let's change it to overlay. And now you can see we have that overlaid behind the actual subject. You could always clean this up. Like I said, you should have a better selection. Um, this is not the greatest selection in the world there. Try to uh, see what's going on with the headphones here. Um, there we go. Bring it up a little bit. But anyway, so that is the way that you would actually use the actual textures that you are that you have that you have available to you. So it's very easy to do. Uh, it's a great concept. Again, use your camera. Make sure you're out there taking some pictures, and you know using those pictures for uh, grabbing some different cameras and textures. And uh, you too will be able to in no time. In no time, you're going to have a ton of textures to uh, play with. When you store textures, make sure that you store those in their own file folder. Just make a folder. I call mine obviously textures and I have one called patterns and I try to make sure I separate those two out. So that just gives you an easy way to um, to store your, your different textures and patterns. Folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning into the show today. Hopefully I enlightened you and didn't waste your time. Hopefully I enlightened you a little bit with your cameras and uh, get you out there and get you shooting. You know, the weather's changing. It is, I guarantee, the summer weather is coming. It's going to get nice again. It, it is. It's going to get nice outside. Um, we're going to have really, really nice weather. And, you know, it, you get those cameras out there and shoot even more. And when you're out there, look at textures outside because, man, I find tons of them. Trees grass, hay. I was in a hay field once and shot a bell of hay. Another great little texture. Uh, and you'll find more and more of those. So thanks for tuning into the show. Uh, if you're downloading these shows from iTunes, and uh, I'm definitely pleased that you are. The uh, listenership on the podcast has been extremely well, and I uh, want to thank everybody for listening in and tuning into the radio shows. But you can catch the video, Full and in Living Color, on YouTube under 42 Techno Man. Also, a lot of you now, have the. it's been very interesting because a lot of you have been uh, sending orders in for the DVDs, and I've been receiving a lot of emails. Jack, are the DVDs still available? Yes, they are. And you can find those at jackstechcorner.com. Look on the right, and there is a DVD selection there where you can pick up your DVD. And uh, the, the latest one on there right now is Photoshop Elements. 
10, but it's still very, very uh, good uh, edits, and you're going to be able to use all those edits in 11 and 12 also. The online class I'm working on is going to be, once again, at jtclearning.com, and the first one is going to be Photoshop Elements 12. Uh, that's the first one coming up on there. And if you stick around today, if you're watching this live, if you stick around, you'll be seeing some of those live previews where I'll be recording those shows. Uh, so, folks, thank you so much again for joining me. I'll see you back here uh, hopefully next week for another The Photography Guy. Have a great work week. Take care. Keep those shutters clicking. Keep your editors editing. And I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to The Photography Guy. I am a photography guy, and I'll be here once again next time for more photography tips and tricks. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the show and enjoy the music.